Hi, kindergarten. So this week in science, um, I've got a couple of lessons for you guys. Um, it's going to be pretty fun. We're going to figure out some new things about pale and dark surfaces. So I'm going to go through these slides. Um, and these go right along with what you're going to be doing this week. Um, so whether you're watching this on Monday or throughout the week, um, not a big deal. So we're going to be looking at modeling warming of different surfaces. Okay, so for day one, so first of all, I just wanted to show you that I updated what we know. Um, so what we know so far about weather, we know the types of weather. We know weather can be sunny, cloudy, rainy, windy, and snowy. And based off last week, you probably saw all of those different weathers, which is pretty fun. Um, you also know that temperature can range from anywhere from very cold to very hot. Okay? And you've used some temperature um, with your outside observations to see how warm or cold it is. And then we also know that the sunlight on the Earth's surface does affect um, whether it's hot, cold, warm um, at night, morning, or afternoon. We know that at night it's usually cold and that's the surface. We know that when the sun heats a surface for a shorter time that it's going to be warm, but if a, the sun hits the surface for a longer time, it's a lot warmer, okay? So that would be like the afternoon and that's gonna be hot. So that's what we know so far. So both playgrounds get warmer when the sunlight shines on them, but woodland is always warmer than Carver and we need to figure out why. So if you're looking, oh, sorry about that. If you're looking at my screen, here's Carver and here's woodland. Okay, we need to figure out what's different about these um, so we can figure out why they are different. So our chapter four question, which we're starting today, why is Woodland Elementary School's playground always warmer during recess? So we know that playgrounds are one example of surface on Earth. We also know that sunlight shines on them for the same amount of time each day. But we need to figure out why some surfaces get warmer than others when sunlight shines on them for the same amount of time. So our, the investigation question we're gonna be using this week is why does one surface on Earth get warmer than another when sunlight shines on them for the same amount of time? So let's think about this as cause and effect and the new part of the problem we're working to solve. Um, so if we think about cause and effect, we need to think about, um, like last week we saw that when it was dark, okay, that was the cause, the effect was that it was colder. We also saw that when it was morning, that's the cause, the effect was that it was warmer than it was at night. And the last cause and effect we saw was the afternoon made an effect that the playground was hot, okay? And we know that because the sun is beating on that surface a little bit longer, okay? So that's how we know cause and effect here. So I want you to think about how cause and effect is going to um, affect these two playgrounds differently, um, even though the sun is shining the same amount of time. So let's think about the ideas we already um, have about our new question. Why does one surface get warmer than another when sunlight shines on them for the same time? So I just want you to take a minute to think. Think about those two playgrounds. Why would one get warmer than the other? That's a big question. I hope you have some ideas because we're going to keep learning. So that's what you would have done on day one. Now for day two, you are going to be reading this book, okay? Um, scientists often read a book more than once, so I know you've read this um, in the last two weeks, um, but this time we're looking for new ideas that we weren't looking for before. Um, this time we're gonna be looking for patterns and we're gonna be making some predictions, okay? So I'm gonna read this book to you right now um, and you can read it again on day two if you'd like um, or just listen now. So 
Um, make sure you're looking for patterns while I read. The sun is just coming up. Morning in the desert is very cold. It is too cold for the lizard to come out. The lizard needs to be warm before it can run and hunt. The lizard stays in its warm, cozy hole. So this makes sense to me because we have done some investigating on the surface in the morning is a little bit cooler than it is in the afternoon because the sun isn't out for quite as long. So the same thing happens to this lizard. I'm going to keep reading for you. The sun comes all the way up. The sunlight shines on the rock and the sand. The rock and sand start to heat up. Even so, they are still too cold for the lizard to come out. So it sounds like the sun is still not shining long enough. Now it's late morning. The sun has been up for a few hours. All that time, the sunlight has been shining on the rocks and the sand. The rocks and sand are getting warmer. The lizard can come out now. It walks across the pale sand. The sand is warm. The lizard finds a dark rock. The rock is hot. The dark rock is warmer than the pale sand, even though both surfaces has been heating the same sunlight all morning. That's something that's really interesting to me. I don't know if you noticed the playgrounds, but the surfaces were different colors. One seemed to be pale and one seemed to be dark. And what we just learned in this book is that the pale sand was not as warm as the dark rock. So I wonder if that has to do with our problem and if we can investigate that to answer it. The lizard sits on a rock and gets warm in the sunlight. Soon the lizard is warm enough to run and hunt. The lizard hunts for bees that are also out in the warm part of the day. They come out and fly around in the sunlight. The lizard catches lots of bees. The day goes on. Now it is the afternoon and the sun has been up for many hours. The sunlight has been shining on the rocks and sand for a long time. The surfaces are even warmer than before. The dark rocks are getting too hot for the lizard. It runs to the pale sand, which is cooler than the dark rocks. Soon, the pale sand also gets too hot. The lizard finds some shade to escape the sunlight. So I just saw a pattern. We saw earlier in the day that the pale sand was cooler than the dark rock. Now in the afternoon, we're seeing the same thing. That's a pattern when you see the same thing over and over. In the afternoon, we're also seeing that the sand is cooler than the dark rock. I also see that as the day goes on and the sun is shining longer and longer, the surfaces are getting warmer and warmer. So that seems to be another pattern. Later, the sun starts to set. The sun goes behind the mountains. The sunlight is not heating the rocks and the sand anymore. The rocks and sand start to get cooler. The lizard runs back to its hole. It needs to get inside before the rocks and sand are too cold. It is evening and the sunlight has been gone for a while. Now it is cold out. A fox comes out of its hole. The fox does not need sunlight to keep warm. It can keep itself warm. So the book described two different surfaces, the rocks and the sand. I want you to think about how the temperatures of the rocks and the sand were different. And I kind of talked about that while I was reading too. Were the temperatures of the rock and the sand the same? How were they different? And what was the pattern that you noticed? What seemed to happen over and over again? And if you don't remember, rewind this because I started talking about that a little bit with the patterns. Remember I talked about how when the sun was out longer, it made the rocks and sand a little bit warmer over time. And I also saw that throughout the day, the sand was always cooler than the dark rocks. The book described the rocks and the, as dark and the sand as pale. What do you think the words dark and pale mean? Think about that for a second. Dark and pale. Well, dark is closer to black than white. 
and pale is closer to white than black. So if I were looking at this page here, this color right here is pale, but this color right here with the words is dark. So if you would like, you can do a warmer and cooler movement routine. Okay, remember that um, when it's cold, your fingers are really still. When it's cool, your fingers start to wiggle a little. When it's warm, your fingers wiggle really quick. And then when it's hot, your fingers wiggle really, really, really fast. And that's um, kind of how we can um, get into the routine of remembering cold and hot. So now we're on to day three. So in the book, we noticed that the rocks got warmer than the sand when the sunlight was shining on them. And we noticed that the rocks are dark while the sand is pale. So let's compare the surfaces of the two playgrounds now. If we look at the playgrounds, do we notice anything different about their surfaces? Remember, here's their surface, and here's the other surface. Do you notice anything different? I sure do. I notice that Carver Playground is pale, and Woodland Playground is dark. How could we investigate whether the surface is being dark or pale is the cause of the temperature difference? That's something to think about. What could we do? So you guys used this model when we were in school, and we saw that when the dark surface, we're using the dark rubber here, and we saw whether it got hot or cold. And remember, um, it was a lot warmer under that lamp, okay? Now, we don't have this model at your house, so we're gonna do this a little bit differently, okay? Um, we could use this model to have dark and pale rubber, okay, if we had those. Um, but unfortunately, we don't have those with us. Um, so we're gonna think this about um, our model a little bit differently. So I want you to think about at night, oh, here's a dark surface, here's a pale surface. At night, in the morning, and then the afternoon, okay? That's what we need our model to represent. Um, so to show the dark and pale surfaces at different times of the day, um, you could use that lamp model, um, like I was just saying, with the dark rubber and the pale rubber, okay? And we could not shine it for a while, we could shine it for a short time, and then we could shine it for a long time. Okay, um, but again, we don't have that model with us, so we're gonna compare our, um, this model with the real world instead. So I want you to go outside, okay, at night, not in the middle of the night, just when it's still, when it's dark out, okay? Um, so this can be at like eight o'clock at night when it's becoming dark, or it can be really early in the morning, um, or you can just think back to a time that you might've been outside at the dark time. Okay, you're gonna go outside in the morning and the afternoon and you're gonna feel surfaces that are dark and that are pale. Okay, so this is what I would have set up in class had we been there, the dark surface and the pale surface. Um, only we're gonna work outdoors instead, okay? So I want you to see if you can go outside and I want you to feel the temperature of both surfaces, one that's dark and one that's pale, okay? Make some predictions. Which one do you think is going to be warmer? Think back to that book that you read um, and think about whether it's going to be the darker that's gonna be warmer or the pale that's gonna be warmer. Okay, so you might um, find something like this um, with a white stripe, that's gonna be the pale or the dark, that's gonna be the dark surface. Or you might find the sidewalk is pale and the street is dark. Okay, or your, um, you could look at the difference between your sidewalk and maybe your driveway. Okay, um, there's lots of different um, things you could, you could use. You don't have to use these. So you're going to go outside. You're going to feel the dark and pale surfaces. Okay, you don't have a partner for this, but you could take a brother, sister, mom, dad, grandma, and grandpa, and you could compare the temperatures. Okay, um, and then um, I want you to share these. Um, on the page that I gave you, okay? I want you to decide whether it was very cold, cold, cool, warm, hot, or very hot, okay, for each time of the day, and the dark and pale, okay? If you guys have questions about that, you can always join my Zoom time from 10.30 to 11.30 every single day, okay? I would love to see you guys too and say hi. 
So on day four, you guys are going to use a graph to organize the temperature data that you um, got from the day before, okay? Um, now, graphs are, are probably new to us. You might have made one in school with your teacher, okay? But we're gonna make one today uh, on day four with our dark surface and our pale surface data, okay? Um, so let's think about for a minute how we could put that data we collected from our surface model in one place. Okay, this is what we would have as our graph, and you guys have one on your paper as well. Okay, um, if I were going to put my dark surface data here, um, I would probably say that when it was not shining, it was cold. So I would put something here. Let's see if I can draw. I sure can. Um, I would color in probably the cold for this. Okay, now in the short time of the day, that was the morning, I would probably think that your data looked something like warm, I would say. Oh, that shot up for some reason, okay? And then in the um, darker, oh, and let's remember that this is, oh, I'm looking at this now, and this is the dark surface. I'm remembering that the dark surface was a little bit warmer, so I'm gonna to add to that. And then in the afternoon, when that sun was shining longer, it was very hot. Sometimes when you go out in the afternoon and touch a dark surface, it's really hot. Like I can never run outside barefoot um, on my driveway in the afternoon, because it's just too hot. Okay, so this might be what yours looks like. Let me get back to my pointer. Okay, so now, we have the pale surface, okay? I suspect that at night it was still pretty cold, okay? And I suspect that your data showed the shorter time of the day to be warm, but not hot. And then I suspect that your longer part of your day was hot, but not very hot for the pale, okay? So your data graph might look something like this, um, but it also might look a little different, and that's completely fine, okay? Um, so I don't know how to go back, so I'm just going to do this a little different. Um, so now I want you to think about how the temperatures of the dark rubber, were they the same or different? Okay, remember we didn't use rubber, we went outside. Uh, were they the same or different than the pail? So we're trying to figure out why one surface on Earth gets warmer than another when the sunlight shines on them for the same amount of time. And from our reading, we thought that one color of a surface might have something to do with how much it heats up. Okay, so based on this data, does color change how warm a surface gets when light shines on it? I'm pretty sure we can say yes at this point. With our data, um, when you went outside and touched the dark and the pale surface, I suspect that you thought the dark was, in fact, warmer than the pale surface. So color does, um, does make a difference here. And our evidence to support that was going outside and feeling that, okay? You actually touching the surfaces is evidence. You did the test, okay? So you were a scientist this week by testing and investigating and collecting data. So what if someone says that light shining doesn't matter, that dark surfaces are always warmer than pale surfaces? Would you agree? And what's your evidence? Hmm. Well, we, we also know that um, the amount of time that light shines um, does make a difference. And we know at night that when the light doesn't shine, the dark and pale were both cold. So that's our evidence. We went outside at nighttime and we saw that the pale and dark were both cold. So the light definitely makes a difference. So our observations can help us figure out cause and effect. So let's compare the dark and pale surfaces when the light was on them for a longer amount. Okay, so I want you to think about um, the longer amount time, okay? Um, it was definitely a lot warmer it, when the sun was shining a longer period of time. So that leads us to day five. Um, remember that this is a reference book, okay? It's called Handbook of Models. And we don't read a, a reference book like we do other books, okay? Um, we, we just read the pages that we need to, okay? We don't read this whole book at one time. 
So today we're going to read about how scientists investigate one thing at a time. So we go to our table of contents and we find what we want. Oh, found it. And we go to our page. So models help scientists investigate one thing at a time. Often the things scientists want to investigate are very complicated, just like we are. There are a lot of things going on at once. That makes it hard to tell how one thing affects another. When they want to know if just one thing affects another, scientists make models. Models are often simpler than the real things. In a model, scientists can make complicated things like weather simpler, just like in our light model that we used in school. The water strider model. Scientists made a model of a water strider. This is a water strider down here. Water striders are little bugs that live in ponds. They can stand and jump on top of water. The scientists asked, how does a water strider jump on the water without sinking? The scientists found out that the water strider's curved legs help it jump on water without sinking. Why did they need a model to learn about water striders? Water striders are animals with many body parts. Scientists had the idea that the water striders curved legs helped them jump. They needed a simple model to test their idea, so they needed something a little simpler. How was the model like the real water strider? So here's the model over here, and here's the real one over here. So it's similar because the model had long curved legs just like the real water strider. And how was the model different from the water strider? Well, the model did not have a head or a body, it only had legs. The scientists only wanted to study one thing, how the water strider uses its legs to jump. So down here, I'm gonna read these two. These are captions for the pictures. They're always important to read. This is a real water strider. The blue part in the wa picture is water. This is a model that water, of a water strider. The gray part in the picture is water. Let's discuss why scientists made the water strider model and how it is similar and different from the real things. So just like we saw, okay, it's similar because it, they both have something that's gonna be water. Um, they also both have legs and that curved part, um, but they're different because this one doesn't have a head or a body, but it really didn't need one for the model because they weren't testing the head or body. Could the scientists use the same model to investigate if water starters could still jump if they had short legs? Why do you think? Well, this model shows long legs. So they would have to change the legs in order to um, investigate a new question. Well, could the scientists use the same model to investigate if the things that water starters eat helps them jump? Well, I'm not sure anything here has to do with eating um, and the food they eat would go in their body and this model doesn't have a body. So I don't think they could use this one, right? They would have to make a completely new model. So now we're going back to our chart, okay? And I've added a few things here, okay? I've added, you see, a dark surface area and I've added a pale surface area. And we know that in at night when the sun's not shining, okay, it was cold for both the dark and the pale. We also know that when the sun is shining a short time, the dark is warmer. And the same thing happened in the afternoon for a long time. It was warmer on the dark surface really interesting. So here's our key concept. Here's what we should have learned this week. Dark surfaces get warmer than pale surfaces when light shines on them. I think we did a good job learning that this week. And that's the end of our lesson. Um, I hope to see you guys in my Zoom time from 1030 to 1130. I definitely miss you guys. I hope you learned a lot from this video and I hope that you have fun testing the surfaces and um, I will see you next week. Bye guys.